the gates of Anfield, a place of glory, of great warmth and feeling, of great players and great characters, a stadium well used to triumphs and filled week in and week out by football fans up on Merseyside who really know their business. And Ian St John was for so long, still is, one of their favourite sons for a very good reason, and that's it, his winner in the 1965 FA Cup final. But now the Saints got a job that is close to impossible. He must pick the greatest ever team of individuals to wear the famous red of Liverpool. And when you think, particularly of the last 30 years, of the glittering stars waiting to catch his attention, well, you can understand when I say the job for Ian St John is close to impossible. I don't know why you put me in this spot, Brian, because it is the most difficult job anyone could have, because Liverpool, certainly since going back to the time I joined them and the team that, that Bill Shankly built into the 60s, every team since then have contained 11 internationals plus two or three also sitting on the bench. So to, to ask me to select 11 players to represent Liverpool from that array of talent is a very difficult job, but I shall do my best. And I'm sure he will, considering men like Peter Thompson and, of course, the one and only Roger Hunt. We've got a goal of his coming up right now. Castle at the moment looking just a little disorganized here's Hall and now a chance for Keegan and that's it Kevin Keegan and on out to highway Toshak's hit again Dalglish good turn away from Holmes that time Sunes well it's some shot to beat the England goalkeeper from that range in again by Hansen, Cannon heading it straight up in the air, Dalgleish challenging, Gilbert there, Dalgleish trying to smuggle his way through, and then chipping away from Barrett, what an astonishing goal by Kenny Dalgleish! Went over Beglin's head, by come for Hughes, brilliant save by Grobelar. Lightning reactions there from the Liverpool keeper. One player's gone tumbling, and it's played across for Rush. That's another one. And that will make it safe for Liverpool. Well, first, the strikers in this greatest ever Liverpool side. Ian will pick two from this list of Gordon Hodgson, Jackie Barmer, Albert Stubbins, the great Roger Hunt, and John Toshak. And then coming a little nearer to the present day, Kevin Keegan, Ian Rush, John Aldridge, and Peter Beardsley. Well, let's start with the, the lads that played before my time. Gordon Hodgson, uh, a South African, who scored 36 goals in a season, and that was in uh, season 30-31. Then we had Jackie Barmer, who in three consecutive games scored a hat-trick. Now, that is pretty unique. And with Albert Stubbins, Liverpool signed him from Newcastle, and the fans still talk about the, the Christmas period goal where Albert dived and headed this ball when his nose, I think, was six inches off the ground. So. I mean, they, they are held with affection, those strikers from the past. But uh, I was very fortunate to, to play alongside Roger Hunt. He was my partner up front when I played. And Roger went on to become one of England's heroes, of course, in the, the 66 World Cup. Now, Roger Hunt had a unique talent. He had two great feet, could crack the ball with either foot. He was as strong as a horse. He was a willing a worker as you could get in football. He was as honest as the day was long. And uh, he would score goals from impossible positions. And to play alongside a player like that was, for me, a treat. St. John. It's Hunt and the score. And I'm sure it was a treat for the Saint to play with the likes of Roger Hunt. He really was a prolific scorer and a good shot here. For the goalkeeper who just can't believe he's been beaten in that way. Roger Hunt again, on target for Liverpool. And as Thompson goes down the left for him, and a cross comes back in from the right, the man in the middle to finish it off, once again, Roger Hunt.
Good flick on Hunt. Oh, he might have gone the other way, but now has uh, Callahan coming up. Thompson moving up for this cross. Hunt! Oh, and a goal! Roger Hunt! Now, when Roger and I finally took our pension books, uh, the partnership of, of Keegan and Toshak uh, appeared on the scene, and that was a, a very exciting period in Liverpool's uh, goal-scoring history because they were a, a terrific partnership. You had Big Tosh who could get up there at the far post, nod the ball down, great heading ability, and little Keegan there who would be buzzing around and snapping around the heels of defenders. And he was as brave as a lion as well, Keegan, would be in there with his head or his feet, and uh, he would be knocking in the goals. Very exciting partnership. Here's Keegan as Webb misses his kick, gives it to Toshak, and Toshak puts it in. Keegan lucky to get that rebound off Webb. Toshak. Keegan! Well, that repays the compliment. Toshak. Did that well. Cormac. Keegan. Oh, what a beautiful goal! What a goal! And now Keegan chasing this one from Rathbone. Toshak! But now it's Keegan away. Got the better of Collier there, and he's got Toshak in the middle. There's a little tip to Don Toshek. Toshek, yes! Toshek has scored. And the ball played to Highway, who hits it well. And Toshek's head deflects it brilliantly. Callaghan. Keegan coming round, and Toshek's head. Goalkeeper didn't know which one to watch. And on out to Highway. Toshak's head again. To Highway. That's a good ball for Keegan's head. And Toshak! What a beauty! Cormac to Toshak. Number three. And Highway's off again. And a useful cross. Toshak! It was a pity in a way that uh, little Keegan didn't have a longer period at Liverpool. I think he played only around seven seasons. But uh, there were seven great seasons for him. And he went on to become the European Player of the Year twice. And great for England. I mean, he had a marvellous career for England, captain England as well. So when you look back on, on great players that have played for Liverpool, you know, Kevin Keegan is a name that, that springs to mind immediately. Thompson shot. Toshak. Beat the way, Keegan! Highway. Good cross for Keegan's head again. And Newcastle at the moment looking just a little disorganised. Here's Hall. And now a chance for Keegan! And that's it! Kevin Keegan has scored for Liverpool. Kevin Keegan trying his tricks, and there's the floating cross again. Tommy Smith almost arrogantly putting it there for Brian Hall. Back again for Tommy Smith. Turned inside for Highway. Playing it again for Smith. What a good move. Oh, and yes, it's there by Keegan. His second goal. And Keegan blasts the shot, and it's in. Liverpool storming forward again. Tommy Smith with that long cross. It's Keegan! An atmosphere here tonight matching the wall of noise which surrounded the players at San Etienne a fortnight ago. Keegan. Djokovic has missed it! John Aldridge, who repeatedly knocks in 30 goals a season, and uh, a unique talent, John, because, I mean, he scored uh, down the leagues in the lower divisions and then continued it when he came to Liverpool, which uh, 
was surprised a lot of people. But I always feel that, that goal scorers are just that. They can score goals at any level, given the right service. And John Aldridge has scored some crackers for Liverpool. Away goes Barnes. Grit is after him. Shirt up in the middle, but for Liverpool, Aldridge is there! And Liverpool are off the mark! Barry Venison. Long ball towards Aldridge. He's after it. And some good work by Boulder, but he's there by Aldridge. There's the long ball again. Trying to get Beardsley away. Lurking in the middle once more, John Aldridge. Barnes coming up from the back. Aldridge is there for the hat-trick. And makes it. Trying to get McMahon through. Aldridge is on the far side. Barnes. For Houghton. He's pulled it back beautifully. Aldridge! What a recovery. Nicole with the free kick for Liverpool. Crossbar there from Aldridge. Oh, just wide that time from Houghton. Barnes. Aldridge is there. Aldridge! And exactly the same again. Liverpool come out of defence and snatch a vital goal. Peter Beersley, almost £2 million by from uh, Newcastle. Again, is a very exciting little player. Uh, quite like... I think Keegan in a way that he can wriggle around in the penalty area. It's very hard to knock off the ball. Uh, scores some great goals, got a, a marvellous talent as well. And uh, a, a player that has made a very big impact at Anfield. Beardsley's waiting in there. What a strike by Beardsley again. We're not leaving it. Horse Backman has got Ablett. And now he in turn has Staunton for help, but also Beardsley infield. And Peter Beardsley has struck a goal out of nothing. Oh, lovely back heel. McMahon, Aldridge, good challenge. Beardsley! Oh, that's a lovely goal. That's a lovely goal. Nickel. Well, certainly Liverpool have been the better side in the second half. Beardsley's oh. in. <laughs> Superb stop by Nickel from his own player, Steve Redmond. But Beardsley reacts. The smiles are on the faces of Liverpool fans again. But one of the most exciting players that uh, Liverpool have had for a long time is Ian Rush. Now, Rushy, uh, in the great goal-scoring mould, he can knock in goals from anywhere. But he's also a player who can, can start from the halfway line, and like Roger Hunt, and get the ball and race away with it, leave defenders in his wake and score. He can also knock them in from close range as well. Here's Souness. And they want it offside there, and Rush sprung the trap, gets round Stevens, and puts Liverpool in front. Dalglish. And Rush. And that has put Stoke out of the FA Cup. It's away from Jones. Dalglish. Rush. 4-2. And there you see just why Ian Rush is feared so much. Douglas getting beyond Arnott. Still Douglas and Rush. Douglas. Quick now from Douglas. Rush had anticipated it. And how he made it pay. That was a superb goal. 
Beglin. Bayon said the referee. And Rush. And it's 1 1. Times Ipswich have been criticised from within the game for the lack of application on the really big occasion. And it was Whelan looking to feed off. And then Rush. Well, he can do nothing wrong. Moldy. Now Rush is free. Bailey's challenging him. Here goes Rush. And Ian Rush scores for Liverpool. Four minutes gone and the ace goal scorer is back in the groove again. Now Rush turning away from Clark. Rush again. Can Rush score? And Ian Rush shows just how it's done. He's had two chances really. And he's taken both of them. Tunis with the pass to Rush, and that's magnificently done. And this time it's Liverpool who start the half with a flourish. But Mar, Liverpool are finding a lot of room in midfield, and that's a marvellous run from John Walk, found by McMahon. Rush is there, Rush has scored, and that could well mean the Screen Sports Super Cup for Liverpool. Well, that was a mowing challenge that fortunately didn't make contact from Ratcliffe but it's left Rush in the clear against Bobby Mims Ian Rush has scored again he's no. making this competition his own benefit Mulby for Rush it's a brilliant pass it's a hat-trick that will live long in the memory now Wheeler they've quickened the pace up now Liverpool now Mulby now Rush here now for Whelan. Dalgleish is making a run for him. One player's gone tumbling. And it's played across for Rush. That's another one. And that will make it safe for Liverpool. And that will mean without any doubt at all now that the league and cup double will be theirs. And those KG Liverpool Warriors look like getting the better of them. Rush is through. The final decisive shot and it's all up with Wimbledon now Beardsley here's Barnes Snowden's got a problem again the cover is arriving but not quickly enough who's there you've guessed Ian Rush Beardsley the Rush again surely not it's Rush It's unbelievable. Well, I'm picking two players that may not look as if they could be a partnership in the sense that, that they might not be able to complement each other. But I have to pick them because I think that uh, it would be unfair to leave them out of this greatest Liverpool side, and that is Roger Hunt and Kevin Keegan. So, Roger Hunt. First game in 1959, over 400 appearances, 245 goals. Roger modest in everything except his high standards and his awesome goal scoring. And Kevin Keegan, signed by Bill Shankly from Scunthorpe in 1971, single-minded and a supremely confident finisher. Now what about the goalkeepers in this greatest ever Liverpool side? Here are the contenders, Sam Hardy, Elisha Scott, Cyril Sidlow, Tommy Younger, Tommy Lawrence, and closer to the present day, Ray Clements, and the present keeper, Bruce Grobelar. Well, Liverpool have always had a reputation of, of having class goalkeepers, going back to Sam Hardy, who played for England. Elisha Scott, great character, and people in Liverpool still revere him, still talk about him, played for Ireland. With Cyril Sidlow, who played for Wales. Tommy Younger, coming uh, just before my time, who played for Scotland, taking us on to the man I played with, Tommy Lawrence, who also played for Scotland. Now, Tommy was a great character, a brave goalkeeper, very brave goalkeeper, and was the first of his type to come off his goal line, because I think goalkeeping, funnily enough, is the one position that has improved more than any other position on the football field. And Tommy was one of the first players to become the sweeper. Tommy had, had a slight uh, weight problem. He, he didn't like a pint. And, <laughs> but uh, he, he was a great character, well loved by the boys. And of course, held the record at that time for, I think it was uh, 23 goals in a season, which was fantastic. 
Ray Clemens came in the side. And I remember Shanks saying something to me after he'd retired. He said, you know, son, he said, with Ray Clemens in the team, we could have been unbeaten for seven seasons, <laughs> which I thought was an exaggeration. Six, maybe even never seven. But Clemens, again, took over from Tommy in, in the role of attacking outside the box, anybody who came through, and was even better at it because he was quicker. And I watched Clemens, played with Clemens, but also watched him develop into what I consider the best English goalkeeper. Without a doubt, in my opinion, if I had been England manager, I would have selected Clemens before anyone else of his time, even Peter Shilton. Kenzie. That was offside. No, it's not. The flag stayed down, and Clemens made a very good save from Palmer, and he had to fish around a long time before he absolutely got it. This could be dangerous. Four men forward supporting him. This is Rushton. He's got a chance for his right foot. Brilliant save by Clements. Case didn't get it right away. Rushton. Brilliant save. And a fantastic reception from the cop for Ray Clements. And he responds. Brucey Grobler has, has taken over from uh, Ray Clemens and is a bigger character than, than previous goalkeepers. And again, well loved by everybody in football, I think not just by uh, the Liverpool fans. Very athletic goalkeeper, very good hands, great reflex action, but is, is known to go walkabouts occasionally. Uh, but uh, <laughs> is always an entertainer. But again, don't forget, his goals against record is terrific. Bob Paisley was always a little bit worried about Bruce, you know, because uh, the fans would get Bruce at it to do tricks and do his handstands. You remember Wembley, when he did the old uh, walking on his hands at Wembley? And Bob was a little bit afraid that, that Bruce would ca get carried away with all this, doing the handsprings and the backflips and, and the walking on hands, and forget about the thing he was there for, and that was to defend the goal. Here's Davenport, touched again for Hodge, driven there, and down he goes, and down the hole, a brilliant piece of keeping. For Walters. What can he do here? Is it the far post? Brilliant save by Grobilar. Touched on by Cowens. Sure, then to with. Walters away on the left. With thinking about the shot. And again, that splendid save from Grobilar. With making the run from the far side. Grobilar's come for it. Ball for Walters. Turns away. Has it gone in? Scooped out by Grobilar. From right underneath the crossbar. Spurs trying to get it to going again. It comes through towards Mavin here. And a fine save by Grobelar. <laughs> Went over Beglin's head. Might come for Hughes. Brilliant save by Grobelar. Lightning reactions there from the Liverpool keeper. This is Barham against Hansen. Guided back by Shannon for Dean and a splendid save from Grobelar. Here's Lillis coming in with a shot and Grobelar. And then a great save. If I have to choose one, it would be between Bruce Tommy and Ray Clements, and I would go for Ray Clements. So Ray Clements gets the vote, just ahead of Bruce Grobelar, and by coincidence, like Keegan, he also signed from Scunthorpe. Close to 500 games and just about everything that was worth winning. Now let's look at the centre-backs in this greatest ever Liverpool side. These are the contenders. Alex Raisbeck from way back, Ron Yates, Tommy Smith, Emlyn Hughes, Phil Thompson, Alan Hansen and Mark Lawrenson. Well, Liverpool have always had a, a tradition of having great Scottish players, going back to Alec Raisbeck, who you know, played for Scotland what, over 30 times. And I think he was probably the first star uh, to come down from Scotland and, uh, and play. Now, Ron Yates was signed by Bill Shankly. And, and the funny story, Ronnie tells it himself. He said that when Shanks came up to sign him, he said, but Ronnie, you know, he said, you want to play, he said, for the first division club. And Ronnie said, but you're not in the first division. Ah, but were you in the side, son, he said will be in the first division. So Ronnie said, well, you, you know, you had to go along with him. So he signed him and brought him down to Liverpool and, and 
told everyone, you know, we've signed the Colossus. Come in and walk around them. And Big Ronnie would stand in the dressing room and people would actually come in and, and look at him and say, oh, he is big, isn't he, you know? <laughs> but Ronnie was a, a terrific player. He had marvellous left foot, you know, mainly left-footed player, although his right came on a bit uh, with all the practice I used to give him. But he, he was great left foot. Nobody could get past him. And don't forget this, Brian, I believe that Ronnie Yates and Tommy Smith, when they were centre-backs, played against better players in the 60s than the modern player. I believe that. If you think of Jimmy Greaves and uh, Big Smithy at Tottenham, you know, Law Best, Charlton at, at Manchester United, Franny Lee and Bell and Summerby and all these fellas at, at City. Going right through, I think they were better players. So as far as Ronnie was concerned, he was playing, I, I think, against better centre forwards in the 60s than the lads of today. Tommy, Tommy Smith, who um, was Ronnie Yates' partner for, for many years at centre-back and uh, great character, Tommy, marvellous boy. You know, his, his bark, far worse than his bite. But uh, the Anfield Iron was his nickname from, the, from the, the cop, and he was hard, Tommy. But fair, I always thought fair. Problem was, he would always talk to referees and linesmen, and they got any more trouble with his tongue, really, than, uh, than with his tackling. Well, it was marvellous to play with Tommy. He, he was such a great character. And he moved to full-back as well and, and played well at full-back. And uh, I can remember in the, the cup final against Newcastle, creating a goal for Kevin Keegan. Great move down the right-hand side and, and a ball across for the little fella. And uh, who will forget his goal in Rome now? I was delighted that Tommy Smith scored in that cup final because nobody deserves it any more than Tommy to, to score a goal in the European Cup final. And a marvellous header it was. Better away by Bonds, Smith. Just watch it again if you can see it, because it's for sure Mervyn Day never did. Tommy Smith's left foot. The Philly Thompson uh, was a big gangling youth that uh, came in the team when I was still there, and uh, I always felt that he would be a good player, and, and that's the way it turned out. Again, Philly matured into a, a very, I would say, responsible player. Didn't do anything wrong, played it nice and safe, and had a very good England career as well. <laughs> Phil Thompson making a charge. And not a bad one as well as Rush goes through. And this surely is a goal for Liverpool. Ian Rush with a fine finishing touch. But what a brilliant break by Phil Thompson. <laughs> and planted back across. And it's in. Thompson has got it. One of uh, Bill Shankly's major signings in the, the mid-60s uh, was Emlyn Hughes, who went on to play for England so many times and give great service to club and country. Uh, a very enthusiastic player, Emlyn. You know, got the crazy horse tag because of the way he charged up and down the field and uh, unlimited energy, unbelievable energy. I mean, we hated training with him because he would run away and leave us all. But uh, he was a player who showed his enthusiasm probably more than, than most. and. Uh, you know, Bill Shankly loved that. Yeats moving up across the penalty spot into the six-yard area, coming back to Hughes, the corner. He's going to try one. Oh, and he hit that one! Oh, what a goal! There's Emlyn Hughes. And now Toshek again for Liverpool. A little flick inside. Here's Highway. Uh, Liverpool putting in a lot of sustained pressure here. It comes out only as far as Emlyn Hughes. Oh, what a finish! You know, the, the centre-back positions, we, we've gone through uh, Yates and Smith, Thompson and Hughes. Now, the modern pair that, that I thought were a great partnership were Lawson and Hansen. Now, Alan Hansen, for me, is, you know, without a doubt, the best centre-back in Europe. He reminds me so much of, of Franz Beckenbauer, uh, a player with poise, who's so calm, 
when the game get, gets really heated, you know, he's the fella who can get the ball, just walk out with it, play a pass, calm the whole thing down. Such a talented player. And a player who, in the modern game, can set off from his own penalty area and end up in the opposing penalty area. And then Hanson. Trying to get McMahon through. Aldridge is on the far side. So Liverpool's corner. Jimmy Case with it. Curled it there once more towards Hanson. And the goal. So Hansen really could play, but his partner, Mark Lawrenson, was also a good player, but I think even a better defender. Lawrenson's talents for me were his ability to get back, going towards his own goal, when the opposition looked as if they were clear, a goal was very much on, and then Laura would be there with that big tackle from the back and win the ball clean as a whistle. Sunes, now Neil, it's Lee to his right, and Dalglish through the middle, this is Lawrenson, hit the post. And the flag has stayed down, and it's Mark Lawrenson with a straight run in on goal here. It's 3-0. Short and left, totally exposed again. Lawrenson. Johnston with a dummy from Dalgleish for Lawrenson. Superb! It was such a pity, really, that he had to finish his career early uh, with injury because he was invaluable with his goals as well. Well, I'm going to break up the partnerships uh, and I'm going to go for Ronnie Yates, who was without doubt the best defender, uh, impossible to go past. And I think with Alan Hansen, the cultured player alongside him, they would have been a, a real formidable centre-back partnership. So, Ron Yates, from 1961 to 1970, he was, in Bill Shankly's words, the colossus in Liverpool's defence. 357 games in that time, and alongside him goes Alan Hansen, one of the best ambassadors the game's ever had. Two Scotsmen providing a great central barrier there for Liverpool. Now let's look at the candidates for right midfield. Ian Callaghan, Jimmy Case, Sammy Lee and Ray Houghton. Well, Ian Callaghan... I uh, was only a boy when I arrived. When I say a boy, he was about 18 year old, and uh, you could tell then that he had a great enthusiasm for the game, and uh, that proved to be the case because he went on to play, I think, a record amount of matches for Liverpool, over 600. And the one thing about Ian was he never ever lost his enthusiasm, and he was still playing well into his mid 30s with the same fire in his belly for the game as he did when he was a youngster of, of 18 when I first met him. Great player to play with because he would get down that right-hand side, throw in crosses, and uh, we used to score a lot of goals from uh, Ian Callaghan's side of the field. Callaghan to highway. Callaghan again, non-stop runner. And Callaghan's cross, met by Kennedy against the bar! Kennedy again! And Keegan couldn't quite meet it. Ashurst pushing him out towards the line, and he'll use Callaghan, who'd gone for that very purpose, and a beautiful cross for Kennedy. Callaghan. Keegan coming round, and Toshak's head. Goalkeeper didn't know which one to watch. Saved by the keeper, Callaghan! Well, when Callie moved inside uh, midfield, Jimmy Case took over. Uh, another local boy, uh, Jimmy had something that uh, very few players have got, the power in his shot. I mean, it was unbelievable. Uh, anything at all from 40 yards, whether it was a rolling ball or whether it was a free kick, Jimmy could belt them. And the thing about uh, Casey, I feel, was that Bob Paisley let him away a little bit early. He had a, a knee problem and Bob felt he was getting towards the end. You know, he'd sort of had his best years. But when Jimmy moved to Brighton and then Southampton, he proved that he could still hit that ball and he could still score goals.
Well, when Jimmy moved on, uh, little Sammy Lee took over. Now, I saw little Sammy, I went to the training ground after I had, I had finished with Liverpool, went down to the training ground uh, just to have a chat with, with Bob and, and the boss. And I saw this little baby face lad running around, and I said to Bob, I said, who's that over there, little choir boy? Oh, he said, Sammy Lee, he says, I think he's going to be a player. And, and sure enough, Sammy became a player, a great little uh, competitor for Liverpool, did a marvellous job on that right-hand side of the field, which allowed Phil Neal to get forward. He would just fill in for him. Very economical with the ball, Sammy. Didn't try to do something he couldn't do. Dalgleish for Lee. Five of them in this break. Lee tries to shot him. What a shot it was, too! One thing about little Sammy, he also was a, re a real enthusiast, loved his football. He felt that every day was a holiday playing football. And the lads, you know, always responded to it. I remember the, the trip to Sudan, where the, the, the boys, I think, maybe had a few drinks. But uh, anyway, we Sammy ended up in the luggage compartment. Managed to get him out for Saturday's match. And you, you could never forget, of course, when they, they won anything and they were celebrating, which Liverpool, I think, were the first team to do that little celebration and sing and, and dance for the photographers at Wembley. And uh, Sammy was always centre stage. <laughs> well, the present player in the position, right-hand side in Liverpool's midfield, is Ray Houghton, uh, a Scot, although he, he does play for the Republic of Ireland. And uh, again, a buzzing little player, you know, very busy in the Liverpool mould, uh, never stops working for the team, tireless little player, and uh, a, a class player as well. So John Barnes now for Liverpool, onto that byline. Oh, he's got it in there! It's happened! An amazing Liverpool goal! I shall go for Ian Callaghan. A nicer man you couldn't meet. So, Ian Callaghan operates down the right, and Callie's record takes some beating between 1959 and 1977, 18 years in the highest company. Now, let's look at the midfield in this greatest ever Liverpool side. What a selection here. Gordon Milne, Billy Stevenson, Terry McDermott, Ray Kennedy, Graham Souness, Kenny Dalgleish, Ronnie Whelan, and Steve McMahon. Who will the Saint choose? Well, Liverpool have had some marvellous players playing uh, central midfield for them. Great partnerships. Uh, I played with Gordon Milne and Billy Stevenson, and uh, two opposites. Gordon, who was a terrier-like little player, good little one-two merchant, you know, could uh, attack and get in the box, and played well for England too. Billy, the, the aristocratic uh, long ball player, great two feet you had, marvellous feet, uh, great long pass out of the ball. Then we had Terry McDermott and Ray Kennedy, another marvellous partnership, one complementing the other. Yeah, McDermott's running from midfield and Kennedy's lovely left foot and you could find him, you know, 40, 50 yard passes. And I'll always remember that McDermott run at uh, Anfield against Tottenham Hotspur where he started in his own six yard box, defended from a corner kick and ended up heading the ball in on the six yard line at the other end of the field. Now that was unique. And Johnson the ball into acres of empty space for Highway. And Highway, a brilliant crossback. McDermott, it was who finished it. And what a classic goal. That come now for Phil Neal. A chance for Neal here. No, it cannoned off the defender. McDermott! Now Keegan. Neal is up on the far post, calling for a cross. McDermott. Oh, that was beautiful! And Terry McDermott has chipped the goalkeeper. And Dalgleish, the scorer of two goals. Setting up a break here for Kennedy. Two against three. Kennedy trying to chip him, and he's got it! Ah, what a superb build Observation by Ray Kennedy. Egan. Liverpool ending the match and the season in fine style. Here's Ray Kennedy, stepped his man quite superbly. And what a lovely left foot to make it 3-1. Sunis, Ray Kennedy. Oh, he turned well on that!
Sagan immediately moving wide of him. This is Toshak. Ashurst pushing him out towards the line. And he'll use Callaghan, who'd gone for that very purpose. And a beautiful cross for Kennedy! The pair who I think followed on from uh, McDermott Kennedy was at Souness and Dalgleish. Now, Souness, Charlie Bubbles, the lads called him because he's liking for a, a glass of champagne. And uh, he had plenty of practice, of course, drinking out of the trophies that Liverpool won. But uh, Souness was a great player. Everything went through him. He, he was a player who demanded the ball, got it from the back players, gave it to the front players. And, of course, he, he could win a tackle. He, he was a ferocious competitor. But a great captain, Graham, you know, led by example, got everybody playing. And uh, some of the best football I ever saw from Liverpool teams uh, were when Graham Souness was in the side. Here's Souness. And they wanted offside there. And Rush sprung the trap, gets round Stevens, and puts Liverpool in front. Dalglish, good turn away from Holmes that time. Souness. Well, it's some shot to beat the England goalkeeper from that range. Watson had a wave at him. Souness! Lee. Guided down by Whelan. It drops for Souness. Fire the post. Graham Souness levels the count with a sweetly struck volley. Neil in for Souness. And a goal! Souness for Liverpool. Kenny Dalglish. Uh, what can you say about Kenny Dalglish? Bob Paisley said that, uh, in his opinion, and, and who would argue with that, that Kenny is the best ever Liverpool player that he had seen in his career at Liverpool. And that spans, what, almost 50 years. Kenny was uh, the all-round player. He could score goals, and he scored many goals for uh, Liverpool, great goals. He was a great passer of the ball and, and could bring players into the game, a great link-up player. And like Souness, you know, he could get the ball off defenders and bring the attackers into play. And I think that, uh, generally, there was very few players in the British game to equal Kenny Dalglish. Thompson. Johnson, Dalglish has got round his man now, little chip. Back in again by Hansen, Cannon heading it straight up in the air, Dalglish challenging, Gilbert there, Dalglish trying to smuggle his way through, and then chip it away from Barrage. what an astonishing goal by Kenny Dalglish. Kennedy back to Cohen. Dalglish, never quite sure which way he'll turn. And got it back onto his left foot. Goal manufactured by Kenny Dalglish out of absolutely nothing. Well, it's Liverpool doing some more attacking now. Done it, playing it in. Dalglish! Dermot. Dalglish. He's got a bit of room. Oh, that is just brilliant from Kenny Dalglish. This hit, but it's found Dalglish and he turns and scores. Dalglish playing it back for Kennedy. Dalglish! It's a good ball for Dalglish. He's got a second chance because Harris's clearance was a bad one, and he's curled it in! Kenny Dalglish, much too good a player to be given a second chance. Dalglish, he's wriggled round McElroy, he's lost Buchan, he's got a chance, what a goal! It's Dalglish, splendidly executed. Liverpool probing forward again, and Dalglish has made space for himself. And tried to curl it, and does! A 
great moment for a master craftsman. What we mustn't forget, of course, is the present partnership, Ronnie Whelan and Steve McMahon. Now, Whelan has scored some memorable goals, including those Wembley special. Shot struck Makari. Kennedy. Whelan. And again, Whelan scored it! Brilliant goal! Ronnie Whelan, who got two last year against Spurs. For Johnston. On for Whelan. He's cleared a run on goal. Can a minute out. Leash, always at his most dangerous here. We learn Ronnie Whelan's second goal wins the game for Liverpool. Dark Leash. No foul by Walk, but Lee kept going. And it's Whelan. Ronnie Whelan arriving at the right time. Lee now. Whelan. Whelan again. A brilliant goal. Steve McMahon now, well, he's got a hard man image. But he also possesses great skill plus an explosive shot. And now Johnston. And he fires it across McMahon. Played <laughs> through to Aldrich. Played through to McMahon. So of the candidates for those two central midfield positions, and I've mentioned some great pairings, I'm going for Graeme Souness and Kenny Dalgleish, and I don't think you can get two better players to play in that position, two of the greatest players of all time. What a combination then the Saint has chosen here. The drive and the leadership of Graeme Souness with 246 games and 38 goals for Liverpool. And then alongside him, what a prospect, Kenny Dalgleish, King Kenny. The obvious choice, really, for this important midfield area, the purest skills and invention. What a thrill they would be to watch and cheer. Now, what about the right-backs in this greatest of Liverpool side? Two contenders here, Chris Lawler and Phil Neal. Well, the right-back position is one that uh, hasn't been filled by too many players because... Uh, Shortly after I arrived at the club, uh, Chris Lawler got in the side at right back and played hundreds of games uh, and played, I think, for about 15 years. And th there was a great story at the training ground one day when uh, I think Chris was going for his 250 consecutive game and he had a bit of an ankle knock, you see. So after we warmed up, Bob Paisley, who was the trainer then, said to Chris, we're doing some shooting, Chris, but just you have a little jog, take it easy. And just at that, the boss walked up and... And he saw Chris going away and he went, where's that malingerer Lawler going? <laughs> 250 consecutive games. But uh, the one thing about Chris, I love playing with him because he could ghost, we called him the ghost, he could ghost into forward positions, play a lovely little one-twos with you on the edge of the box and scored over 50 goals, never having taken a free kick or a penalty kick. So he was without doubt the best attacking goal-scoring fullback in the history, I think, of British football. Phil Neal took over from Chris Lawler, and I thought developed into a very good player, Phil, you know. In the modern game, a very good attacking player. And was given great service, of course, by uh, the people in front of him, because Jimmy Case played in a wide right position there and used to fill in for him and let uh, Phil Neal attack. And Phil scored a lot of goals as well, but as well as taking penalty kicks for Liverpool. But in the modern game, Phil Neal became a very, very good player for Liverpool. And like Chris Lawler, Phil Neal was always liable to pop up at a crucial time in a match and score goals. Remember, he scored a goal, you know, in Rome in the European Cup final. Rush. Here's Neal. Well, it was deflected and off the post. 
It's Phil Neal's goal. Neal trying to get things going again. Nicole for Neal. This could be more trouble now. Saved superbly by Clements. Well, I have to go for the quiet man, Chris Lawler. So, Chris Lawler, the quiet man, except that his record spoke loudly enough, 406 games without his right-back position ever being seriously challenged between 1962 and 1974. Now what about the contenders for left-back? Jerry Byrne, Alec Lindsay, Alan Kennedy and Steve Nicholl. Well, Jerry Byrne was a real character. Jerry was almost as quiet as Chris Lawler, by the way. But uh, he was the only player that Bill Shankly barred from uh, tackling in a five-a-side on a Friday. He was so hard. Jerry Byrne was the hardest player, I think, that I had certainly played with. I mean, he was far harder than Tommy Smith. Tommy had a reputation. But Jerry was ruthless, quiet, never said a word, never spoke to the opposition. You know, he'd just go in. And he wasn't dirty, just hard. And he would hit them, and, they'd, and they would bounce them off the walls just with strength. He was ferocious, but also a good player, Jerry. And, and I remember he played in the cup final, in our 65 cup final, with a broken collarbone. And I mean, he must have been in agony, but he just, I mean, there's nobody in football I don't think could have played the way Jerry Byrne did in that cup final. And I mean, he was a very unique person. Now, Alec Lindsay took over from Jerry, who had to finish his career a little bit earlier with a, with a bad knee. Now, Alec Lindsay was a different player, a very cultured player, you know, and, and Shanks used to say about Alec, he could open a can with that left foot of his. And marvellous, and I played a little bit with him at the end of my career, but he could find you, wherever you were up front, Alec could drop the ball into you. I mean, he had a marvellous left foot. The man that took over from him, of course, was Alan Kennedy. Now, he had pace. You know, he could catch uh, waste paper in the window. He was very, very quick. And became a, a big favourite with the fans, you know, Barney Kennedy, they called him Barney Rubble. And, uh, he would race forward, get shots on and go a bit erratic with his finishing. But he certainly wasn't erratic in the final in Paris, the European Cup, when he raced forward and cracked that winner in. Again, the outlet is the fullback, Kennedy. It's in! Which brings us on to the present day players, uh, Steve Nicholl. And I know Nicholl can play right back, centre back, midfield, he can play anywhere. He is probably the modern player, you know, the, the all-purpose player. He has a lot of pace, he's a very good uh, user of the ball, and he's a good tackler as well, and he can also score goals. Nichols made a good forward run, and here he is, Stevie Nichol. Oh, yes! Spearsley, touch for Barnes. Oh, Nichols coming up quick on the left-hand side, and scores! Barnes, can he pinpoint across? Not it again! Oh! Steve Nicol has scored a critical goal for Liverpool. Again, trying to get it inside half, it does so this time as Nicol makes a good break. Played in there, Southall did well, can rush get in there. One nil to Liverpool. And now Mark Lawrenson. Must do once more. And the header goes down, and it goes in from Steve Nicol, and that makes it three. Burrows, Beardsley, Nickel. Oh, he's hit it perfectly. Well, my choice, and it's a difficult one, this, but I would go for Stevie Nickel. Steve Nickel, Liverpool fans of today know him well and know his value too. Not a frequent headline maker, but just count up the different positions Steve has filled with distinction. The Saints chosen him as left back. All right, now the contenders for left midfield, or left wing, really. Billy Little, Peter Thompson, Steve Highway, and, of course, John Barnes. Well, the left wing position at Liverpool is one that really has given me a problem. Because going back to, to the days of, of Liddlepool, as it was called, when, when the great Billy Little was playing, just after the war, there, there must have been a lot of disruption in the game uh, players coming back after being away at the war, you know, clubs really not being settled. And Billy played through all that time. And his appearances and his goal-scoring record for Liverpool is, is absolutely superb. Now, I personally didn't see Billy playing for Liverpool, but Bob Paisley, who did play alongside him uh, and was a great little fan, has told me on umpteen occasions 
about the qualities that Billy had, his tremendous strength, his pace, the power of his shooting, you know, and again, his Liverpool tradition of, of playing for the jersey. Liverpool were soon forcing the pace, and less than 20 minutes had passed when the second division team put Everton one down with a goal by Billy Little. I was fortunate to play with Peter Thompson, who I consider one of the great entertainers of English football. Peter, uh, marvellous skills. And I remember one day we came in and Billy Stevenson, who, who was a bit of a joker, we all sat down with a half-time cup of tea and Billy says, Peter, he said, what a dribble that was you had there. He says, you beat six people, he says, the referee three times and me twice. <laughs> but Peter Thompson, Shanks would say to us, and this is true, Shanks would say, if you're getting tired, boys, give it to Peter, you know, and he would hold on to it. And Peter Thompson could get the ball and dribble around, and he had great strength, because dribbling over the ball is very tiring. But Peter could get it and dribble, and, and he was a, a marvellous entertainer. And I, I know people, Liverpool fans, who purposely bought tickets at the Kenwyn Road side just to sit there and watch Peter Thompson dribble. West Ham defenders have all got back. Now Thompson. Oh, what a goal! What a goal! Following Peter Thompson, we had a different style of winger. We had Stevie Highway, who was very direct, and you couldn't get more direct than Stevie. He would had the, he had this high stepping running action, you know, knees up, and he would get the ball and knock it, and he would fly, and uh, it, it was a great sight to see him racing down the left hand side of the field and whipping in the crosses, and who will ever forget the, the time when he completely turned the game, the local derby against Everton, two 0 down at half time, then Highway took over. To Highway, and he's over Hurst's tackle. Man in the middle, and he scored! What a goal! Steve Highway! He used to take the throw. And Highway's off again. And a useful cross. Josh Highway bursting on it. Highway jinking round with space for a shot. And a goal! Yes, indeed. And Callaghan for Keegan, who's onside. Highway, number four! There were some great performances uh, from Highway, a very exciting player. And of course, don't forget, he also scored a, a goal in the cup final not long after he was in the team. Uh, when Liverpool lost to Arsenal, he managed to meet a certain uh, Bob Wilson at the near post. Way on the left is Highway. Still Highway, dangerous indeed! present player uh, in that position uh, on the left-hand side of the field is John Barnes, who is in the, the Peter Thompson mould. Uh, again, a great entertainer, someone who can get the ball and, and go around two and three players. And maybe a little bit better than Peter in scoring goals. Peter wasn't a great goal scorer, but John Barnes scores goals, and, the, and they're all very exciting goals as well. And here's Barnes. He's got Johnston and Beardsley up with him. Beardsley away on the left. Five defenders back, and here's John Barnes. This could be number four. It is. And I think he will become, you know, one of the great all-time players for Liverpool. Beardsley, a lovely header by Beardsley for Houghton. Locked out by him towards Barnes. A brilliant goal. Aldridge now, a first-time ball in the direction of Barnes, and he does the rest. Barnes. Against Chettle. <laughs> oh, look at Barnes here. They're waiting for the pullback. Beardsley! Oh, a glorious goal again for Liverpool. Barnes. And Barnes again. Three. Brock. 
He's got Beardsley going to his left, but still Barnes. That's a fabulous individual goal. And here's Barnes. He's got Johnston and Beardsley up with him. Beardsley away on the left. City with five defenders back, and here's John Barnes. This could be number four. It is. But the man I choose, and I don't really think you could leave him out because of his amazing goal-scoring record, Billy Little. So, Billy Little, the Saint goes back to the 40s and 50s for his left-sided player. Billy, a one-club man, 14 seasons, 495 games, 216 goals. It says it all. And this, then, is Ian's greatest ever Liverpool side. It might just get Anfield buzzing a bit, you'll agree. In goal, Clements. A back four, Lawler, Hansen, Yates and Nickel. And through the midfield, Callaghan, Soonis, Dalgleish and Little. And up front, Keegan and Hunt. The queues to watch them would stretch twice round Stanley Park. But he's also allowed five substitutes. Another tough one. But I'd go Bruce Grobler in goal. I'd have uh, Mark Lawrenson and Emlyn Hughes as uh, defenders come midfield player. I'd have Terry McDermott as a midfield player and Ian Rush up front. I feel there can only be one manager, and we've had great managers in Bob Paisley and Joe Fagan and Kenny Dalgleish, but I have to pick Bill Shankly, the man who really built this club up to the power it is in world football at the moment. My idea was that to build Liverpool into a bastion of invincibility, you know, like, he possibly, ne he, Napoleon had that idea, he would conquer the bloody world, you know. And that's what I wanted, that Liverpool would be uh, untouchable. So what better than to finish with the words of the great Bill Shankly and just one last look at that fabulous Liverpool side that I've no doubt will provoke many an argument up on Merseyside, but I've no doubt which anybody in the world would just love to see play.